Kia welcome to Bus Days. It's the middle of winter here and it's pretty bloody cold working on the bus so I might chuck some heating in and of course as you know I've got this diesel heater and uh, I'm going to install that into the bus today. Now I haven't finished configuring the front end of the bus where the heater would go um, so I'm just going to kind of mount it properly but not necessarily where it's going to end up although there's a good chance that that is in fact exactly where it will end up. And I say that because in my floor where the original bus diesel heater was mounted is a bloody great big hole that happens to be the perfect size for that. So, it's going to go there. So, with the heater flipped up, we're going to mount it on its base. Now, it will need this um, rubber gasket to seal it. So, that's going to go on like this. So, that the ring of this gasket comes around the outside of this ring here. And it will form a nice seal to keep the inside and the outside, where the exhaust gases are, quite separate. So the first thing is this this cable here which is stuck through the side of this pipe that just needs to come up. That needs to be outside so that's going to go through my gasket. Now to do, to do this I'm going to need to take this little protective cap off of the fuel pipe. And the rubber gasket is a nice tight fit around both the, around both the intake and the exhaust and uh, it all sits in there really nicely. And you can see it overhanging the uh, the edge of the mounting plate. As soon as I've slipped everything on, I'm just going to cover up that fuel pipe again, just to make sure no crap gets in there. Now the the mounting plate, whilst it can go um, either way, face either way, it does have a top and a bottom because um, if you put it on upside down the fuel line won't have a hole to line up with. In the little kit that comes with the heater is everything you need. In this case right now I need four M6 nuts and four M6 flat washers. Okay so nipped then up with a 10 mil spanner. Whenever you're dealing with studs coming out of something you kind of be very careful not to over tighten them because if you bugger that stud you kind of you're in a bit of trouble then um, and m6 bolts don't have a very high torque anyway so so just tight enough to hold it in place it's not it's not got much of a job and just screw it down actually you would seal this plate down um, but because I need to be able to take it back out I'm not going to in this case. But a bit of silicon round that's probably all it would need. Now the rest of the work really kind of happens underneath the bus here. I'm just using a fuel can so I'll be going in through the lid but if you've got the uh, fuel container that comes with the kit, is optional with the kit, it probably has no hole in it to mount the fuel line so it's going to need an 18mm hole in the place that you're choosing obviously at the top. Now the idea of the fuel line is it shouldn't touch the bottom of your diesel tank so that it can't pick up any crud off the off the bottom that's settled to the bottom so you want it to be just a bit above maybe about an inch above the bottom of the tank like so. Um, in my case I've twisted it into a funny shape. Now you could cut it and that would be the exact right length but I, I don't want to cut it just yet so I've made it into a funny shape now what I'm aiming for is being, when it's installed, being close to the bottom of the tank and being uphill all the way. Now what that does is it means that I can't get any air locks, air bubbles trapped in there. So mine's ended up like this. Now I don't think that's going to be the best way to do it long term because you need to obviously take the lid off to refill it. So you definitely want to cut yourself a hole um, in an appropriate spot and mount it more permanently. Uh, something else that's quite important is um, it needs to vent. 
otherwise it's going to be trying to suck diesel out of here and it'll just slowly shrink the tank down until it can't suck the diesel out anymore so I will have to have this little vent open a little bit just to equalize the pressure in the tank as I use diesel an alternative is to tee into an existing fuel line um, now you wouldn't want to go into the one that's feeding the engine that will be competing with the engine you, you, you'd be better off with maybe a return to tank line so here's the fuel pump it's um, pretty simple it mounts in this little rubber mount which will uh, screw to something solid and this will perform a couple of functions it'll help protect the pump from knocks and stuff but but perhaps more to the point is it isolates it so that the ticking of the pump doesn't transfer so badly into the vehicle now the pump itself um, has a standard plug on it, well not so much a standard plug but a special plug for the kit um, and this is actually the same here this is the plug, now this is the extension lead to allow you to mount the pump a fair way from the heater the, the pump can actually be 6 metres away from the heater, I'm not too sure how long that lead is but um, can be as long as that anyway but yeah 6 metres away so what that means is the pressure line from the pump can be about six meters long but it has to be this line and it, since it's written on it you can probably buy more of it but it is a pretty standard fuel line I think it's about a two mil hole on a five mil pipe the suction end of this pump is a little more sensitive so it needs to be within 1200 millimeters of the fuel tank or um, or at least 500 millimeters so yeah between half a meter and a meter uh, of suction for this pump will be fine now the height of these fuel pumps is also quite important it shouldn't be more than 500 mils away from the surface of the fuel now that ranges clearly from the top to the bottom but so at its lowest point the pump shouldn't be more than half a meter above that now in terms of in terms of the heaters position that can be up to two meters above the pump and when the fuels at its highest point that can't be more than three meters above the pump so the fuel tank can be quite a way above the pump in general terms but uh, won't like being too much below it. Don't forget to slip on the hose clamps before assembling it. Now when I push this onto here I want to push it all the way in but I also want to push this fuel line all the way in as well so that they're touching and so that there is no um, gap where air bubbles could get trapped. Now you don't want to over tighten these screws either and you can see now the significance of the orientation if that screw was on the other side, on the left hand side, I wouldn't be able to do it up well I would but it would be kind of awkward. The same logic will of course apply to both the intake and the exhaust. So this is the main plug for the heater, well the only plug that goes into the heater um, and it splits into two, one end goes off to the power source and the other to the controller. It simply goes in here, there's an extender bit to make it easier to use. That will also catch on here once it's in. And it's quite hard to push in and get locked into there. So I'm going to route the wire out this side today uh, there's some nice little clips to hold it in place and the rubber grommet sits down perfectly in the hole Then the cover simply clips on So at one end of the main conduit are these two plugs a black one and a white one which match up with the plugs on the controller and like a lot of plugs they have like a particular pattern so they can actually only go together one way so you can't get them wrong the most important thing being to make sure you get that click and it's locked together 
At the power supply end is the um, fuse, 20 amp in this case because it's 12 volt. And that's just a standard blade fuse and our two battery connections now. These things are very voltage sensitive so they really want to be hooked directly to the battery. Um, but as always I'm going to try something different. Not for testing however, I will just clamp it onto a battery. Now like in my testing, before start up I'm going to run some fuel through it using the fuel only setting on the controller. I now need to turn the pump on. Now I can turn the pump on on its own by setting to the timer screen. I don't know if you can see that. Which is the clock, it depends on your model, but then I press both the top buttons at once. And that will take me to the program menu, I'm on P1, I need to just change to P2, and select OK, and it goes into a fuel pumping mode. So the pump is running, and really all I'm trying to do is just to get the fuel to come right through the line till it's uh, coming out the end here. Right then, with all the air bled out of the diesel line and it's hooked back up to the heater, we're ready for a test start. So I'll get into more detail about using this controller later, but at the moment any key will turn it on. We want to move it through its settings until it's on heat and press OK. It says it's going to fire up at 21 degrees, or try to get to 21 degrees. Now, the unit has started up. Let's have a look underneath. Nothing much happening here yet. Microprocess is checking everything, making sure it's good to go, and it's about to give this pump a quick kick to check the fuel. And there it goes, just a few quick ticks, and now it's gone into its normal ticking operation. And we should very soon see a bit of smoke coming out of here as it starts up. There we go. Just a little bit of smoke there on startup. Yeah, the burner actually starting to burn now. And that's the end of the smoke. So it's now burning. And burning nice and clean. Let's get back inside. So the display is showing that it's on. That's this little heating symbol at the bottom and it's set to 21 degrees. So that means it's set with this little thermostat to try and achieve 21, 21 degrees and stay there. The heater itself is blowing out, well it's only warm air at the moment, but it's still heating up. Pretty straightforward really. Very, very easy to use. And we've just heard it crank up. That's because the temperature inside has reached a point where it's blowing out quite hot here. And I think as the air temperature increases, it will reach its full fan speed and just constantly adjusts its speed to uh, the temperature it's trying to achieve. So the only other settings I need to worry about once it's running are turning the temperature up and down or I can by pressing and holding the OK button for I think three seconds then I can change it to uh, just a simple level control like how much 
I want the heater on and that varies from uh, setting 1 to setting 7. Um, so that way, 7 being the maximum. So that's just simply running the heater at maximum with no temperature control whatsoever. I would probably prefer it to be thermostatic. So I'm going to leave it on this. If I set the temperature quite low, obviously the heater slows down and gets a lot quieter uh, because it's it's still running, but it's running on low. And then if I turn it back up, it will start adding more fuel and start turning back up again. Now turning it off is something I actually struggled with at first. Um, however, when you think about it, it's not that difficult. You press the off button. Now, uh, don't be confused that nothing at all appears to have happened. What's happened is it stopped pumping fuel. And uh, now as the heater unit, so the display's gone off, as the heater unit cools down, it will stop blowing air through it, but it will continue to blow air through and go through its shutdown cycle. That's why it's so important that you turn it off only using the controller and uh, don't disconnect it from power because it will stop the internal fans and uh, it won't have an opportunity to cool down and put overheat. Okay, so I've had this heater installed for a few days now and um, the initial tests have been fine. It, 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 I can, it's got a pump setting so that you can pump fuel through to the heater without having to muck around restarting it over and over and over while it uh, fills up the fuel lines and gets rid of all the bubbles. So that went pretty smoothly and it's quite easy to turn it on. It's easy to turn it off and uh, pretty easy to program, although I didn't realize that I had programmed it. The thing is I was fumbling around uh, with the menu in Chinese and didn't really um, understand what I was doing and what I'd actually done was set it to come on and off at various times on various days. Um, so I was finding uh, quite late at night that it was turned on. Anyway, I've learned a little bit more about how this controller works, so I'll show you that now. When you first turn it on, it's going to uh, want you to initialize it and to set the date and time. Now, um, I don't think that's critical. In fact, it's not the date, it's the day. So it wants to know what day it is and what time of that day it is. So the actual date is not, it's not really relevant. Now, um, if you can understand the Chinese writing for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., then go for it. Otherwise, just fumble your way through that and ignore it. Now, once you have control of the unit, with it on, see the little clock there flashing in the side there? That indicates what is um, selected. So, uh, if I can get it into a better view for you. So, that's the clock, that's heat and that's program. So we want to be on the clock and then what we want to do is to press both of these buttons simultaneously which is surprisingly hard to do. So we just keep going back to the clock, it didn't work, now we go. So once we get to this P1 then we select OK which will take us to C1. Now that's the language thing, we select OK. Now I've got it set to on off would be Chinese, on would be New Zealand, select OK and then we can press uh, the, the looks like an on off button to back out of that menu. So now we've got a menu in English although not much of it changes really only the day. So now that we've got control of it and we've got it in English while we're on the clock we'll set the time. So we'll get into here and it is Monday and it is 17 49. That's the time set. Now we'll get into programming it. So we'll get into here and uh, we've got the option of one, two and three. Now that means we can have three different programs 
Um, so we'll go into one, uh, we'll turn it on so that it sets that on and we want it to come on. Uh, now this is the number of minutes, right? So we can change that to, I don't know, five minutes or something like that. So we'll set that to five minutes, say OK. Now we tell it what time to come on. So I'm going to say to come on at, at 5.52, which is in about a minute's time. Okay, and I'm going to set that timer as on. Now I could set Tuesday and so on, so I'm saying Tuesday off, Wednesday off, Thursday off, Friday off, Saturday off, Sunday off. So what I've done is I've set it to come on at 5.51 on a Monday. I think. <laughs> now if you have a look in the standby menu you can see there's a one up in the top there and uh, that's saying that I've got something set up. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, but in the background the heater is just fired up, fired up. So we set it for 5 minutes and I think that's maybe 4.9 minutes left to run. Um, so the timer function allows you to set up to 3 different times on any or all days of the week. For argument's sake, you might have it come on at uh, 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, but 6 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I'll need that. Um, but there is another way to simply turn it on. Now, if you press any button, the screen will become active. Um, and then if we go to the heat menu, uh, which is that one there, and simply press OK. You know, that will fire it up. So to turn it off, I press the off button and you'll see the little heat symbol gone and you can probably hear in the background the pump slowly powering down, the heat is slowly powering down. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, maybe you'll find it useful if you're trying to install one of these yourself. Uh, anyway, if you did, like and subscribe, hit all the buttons, and uh, hopefully that means we'll see you again soon. Take care. Matiwa. Well.